Hi, this is Patrick Conroy, and we're up to Chapter 5, Causes of Actions and Litigation Strategies. I'm going to go ahead and break this into three parts, um, but none of them are very long. So the learning objectives. Describe the litigation strategies and options for recovering damages. Describe the elements that must be proven in tort litigation and potential defenses. Describe the elements necessary to prove a breach of contract claim and potential defenses. Describe the purpose, purpose and proof necessary to recover monetary damages or equitable relief. Learn. Describing the litigation strategies and options for recovering damages. Okay, first you need a cause of action. And it's a fact or a set of facts, sometimes referred to as the elements of the cause of action that is the basis for a lawsuit and an award of judicially enforceable remedy. Simple enough. Selecting a cause of action requires careful consideration of the sources of law, the facts that must be proven, the available evidence, and the procedure to follow. Is there a legal remedy for the situation? Are you going to be able to prove that this action occurred, what sort of evidence is available, and what's the process. So here's an example of a checklist. So for tort, we have these are the elements, and these are the plaintiffs and the potential defendants. Breach of contract, where all of these elements met. Now we've covered these in other courses, so this should be, you know, just sort of a reminder. Um, you know, potential causes of action. These are sort of like legal, the laws that are out there and who would be the plaintiffs and the defendants. Strict liability, product liability, also causes of action. So we have the cause of actions. Parties must carry their burdens of proof with relevant evidence. Be mindful of statutes of limitation. That's where a lot of people can mess up and get certain things that be filed with the court by a certain time. And you want to consider ju jurisdiction and venue. You know, does the state court have jurisdiction over the, the defendant? Or would you be able to, or might you be better off in federal court because sometimes the damages are higher? So that's the first part. See, I told you to be quick. And we'll get into learning objective two in a second.